You guys have been asking for it, and today we're gonna do it. This is a meal plan, but not a meal plan for a full seven days with 21 dishes. And we're gonna grab the ingredients and landers and head on to the kitchen studio. So we will be making close to 15 to 16 dishes in one video. I am pumped! Taking so many supplements, getting ready, let's go! So what we're trying to do here is just to kind of show you a basis of exactly of what I would eat during one uh, week. It's going to be very confusing. I did a boodle fight, but you guys loved it that we cooked everything at the same time. So we're going to do exactly the same thing here, is cook everything at the same time. Listen, when I'm meal planning or when I'm trying to cut weight or when I'm trying to lose fat, honestly for me, flavor is number two. Number one is nutrients, is the density of everything that I'm getting in there with all the ingredients. And number three is the convenience. So I try to make something that's good, but not something that's delicious that I'm gonna crave for. At the end of the day, I wanna eat the food I'm putting together in the meal plan as purely fuel and nothing else. Food is not entertainment when you're trying to cut weight. Sorry to break it to you folks, that's the truth of it. So I've got a couple things already boiling. These are the starches. So I've already kind of figured out what I wanna do. I got one bowl with some sabat bananas and some sweet potatoes. I have one bowl with some red rice that's already cooked, and I have one bowl that's bubbling away with some mongo. So these are kind of like the main starches we'll be using. In the spirit of this video of doing everything at the same time, in the sabat and the sweet potatoes, I'm gonna drop in some eggs so I can boil those. Very quick protein. So today we're gonna to be using some tuna, some salmon, some shrimp, some chicken ground meat, and some chicken breast. I won't be having pork or beef because I'm looking to cut weight. Only thing in terms of ingredients that I will be adding except for the starches that I showed you a while ago and the vegetables and the proteins are my flavor builders. And those are things like sauces, powders, things that bring flavor but not a lot of calories. So very simple, we're gonna start with the ground chicken. So for the ground chicken, I'm planning to do kind of like a chili, not really a chili, just a very quick chili. Pot goes on, I'm gonna chop up a bit of garlic, some oil goes in there, garlic goes in, we're just trying to infuse all those flavors in the oil, about half an onion into the oil, let that flavor build slowly. With the garlic and the onions, in go the ground chicken. As it cooks down, we start just mashing it. I'm just gonna wait for that to bubble, wait for that fat to start kind of reducing. Season it with some salt and some pepper. So once your chicken has a little bit of color, we're gonna throw in some red beans, one can of crushed tomatoes, more salt and pepper. I got some Sazon Tropical, some chipotle powder, so a little bit of spice, and I've got some ground sage. Mix all that in, and then we're just gonna let that stew slowly. Next, got another pan out right here. Same thing, a little bit of oil. And here I'm gonna just cook all the chicken breast basically. Garlic, onions, let that start frying off. So I'm taking half the chicken breast, a little bit of sesame oil, some pepper, and some rice wine vinegar, to which we're gonna add some soy sauce after as well. That's just gonna help kind of deglaze the pan and get all those flavors to come back up. Next, a little bit of oil again, garlic and onions. Other half goes into the other pan, and we're gonna let color build on both sides. I'm gonna go in with some coconut cream, a little bit of fish sauce, and again, you can use whatever spices you want, but I'm just gonna put some curry powder. Nice and simple. Now we just wait for all that to cook down before we move on to the seafood. All our chicken dishes and our starches are pretty much done. Take everything off the fire. Yes, it looks like there's a lot going on in a lot of dishes, but remember that this is for a week. Let's try the mongo at this point. Perfectly cooked. Nice and tender, just needs a little seasoning, salt, and that's all we need. Take that off the fire so that we can add another pan. Okay, next set, seafood, seafood. A little bit of oil goes into our flat pan here. Two boneless bangus pieces go on top. A bit of oil drizzled all over it. So I got some salt. This goes into the oven for about, I have no idea. 35 minutes. Next, all pans have some oil. I'm gonna put garlic for the tuna and the shrimp. So two pieces of salmon, skin side first. Oil that pan using the oil 
of the salmon. And then I'm just gonna cook that on one side. When it starts bubbling, when it starts getting opaque on one side, I'm gonna flip it to the other side. All the shrimp go into these, this pan over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter in there. Next, tuna, very simple. Still alive. Tuna, very simple, adds a sashimi, goes right into the bed of the garlic. We're gonna cook it on each side because it's a nice little square, and then we're gonna chop that up. So what we did is we started the tuna with some oil, and then I just caramelized those pieces of garlic here so that I have some sort of garlic oil happening that I can use as a seasoning, and I finished it in the pan with some salmon. There is zero seasoning at this point, so we're gonna add in a bit of salt and some pepper on the fish, and then now we're gonna let all that Finish off, tuna, salmon in one bowl. Keep that to the side. Use a little bit of my garlic oil over here. Add in some fresh garlic. Now I'm gonna cook some vegetables. Very simple, cabbage. And then the next round, I'm gonna add a little bit of kong kong. I like some sesame oil with my cabbage. So just salt on this one. We're just looking to wilt the cabbage a little bit. Once it becomes a little translucent, then you're good to go. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with the kung kong. A little bit of my garlic oil. This time I'm gonna add all the garlic chips as well. Hard stocks go in first. This I'm gonna cook with a little bit of fish sauce. Kung kong stocks are out. Now we're just gonna add the actual kung kong leaves. Added a bit of oil because it's looking a little dry. And usually when I cook kung kong leaves, I like to add some sort of liquid to it just because the steam will kind of help cook everything quicker. So I'm gonna add a little bit of rice vinegar and a tad bit of soy sauce as well. Toss them back in with the stocks. 42 minutes to get 15 meals done, not too bad. All we need to do now is assemble. So that's everything. As you can see, I removed the skins and the bones from the fish. That way we can just put everything in a Tupperware. And then from that Tupperware, all you have to do is mix everything. You kind of don't have to pick at anything as well, which makes it more convenient. So we're gonna first start by combining everything into these little Tupperwares. If I'm really cutting, this is what I'm eating during one day. So we're gonna start with our chicken curry first. What's great about this is you can kind of just mix and match absolutely everything we have in front of us. This, for example, for me is about 150 grams of chicken breast per Tupperware. So this would be kind of like your perfect post-workout meal and a bit of kung kong. Meal one, done. Now we're gonna do the shrimp, cabbage. So this would be a light dinner option. To this, we can add a little bit of mongo. Dish number two, done. Next, bangus. Another option for a great post-workout meal. Camote. I can add the rest of the cabbage that we still have here. It's not enough for one, no problem. We still have some kung kong. Dish three, done. Next, we're gonna work with our tuna and our salmon. So tuna goes in one, salmon goes in the other. Some camote, my boiled eggs, a little bit of red rice, some of my garlic chili oil on the fish, and that's good to go. Next, <laughs> we ran out of toppers. Next, we're gonna do the mongo, and we can kind of mix in everything. So I'm gonna do the chicken and beans. And last but not least, literally out of top of ours, kong kong, chicken breast, and our saba. Can add in a little bit of red rice if you want. And I think that's it. 19 different dishes. Pop them out, thaw it out, and then just put it in the microwave or just dump everything into a pan again and then fry everything off again if you wanna get it nice and warm. Um, and literally in five minutes you have a dish. So it takes about an hour and a half of your time to kind of put everything together, but then you don't have to cook for the rest of the week. And a lot of people I know, you're saying, Erwin, you're crazy, you're only eating these three things. Well, yes, because if you wanna lose fat, that's what you gotta do. But secondly, if you're looking for something else to eat, you can add things like apples or bananas as, um, as snacks in between of the day. Super simple. Now. I'm gonna put everything together so we can get a nice pretty picture. So there you have it, um, very easy to make. Like I said in the beginning, priority here is the nutrition, the amount of calories that you get per day, the proper portioning of everything, and the variety of the products that we're using throughout. Each of these dishes has about anywhere from three to five ingredients, not counting our little spice box and the salt and pepper. Um, and it's just a great way to kind of keep you disciplined and on track because at the end of the day, if you're looking for fat loss, you really 
really need that discipline and you need that organization. And anyone who says, I don't have time to cook, I just prove to you that in one hour and a half, you can cook for six days. What's an hour and a half divided by six? But it's like 10 minutes per day cooked, but you're doing it in advance. So um, really great option, no excuses. If you want to get fitter, just make it happen for yourself. Peace. I'm gonna grab one of these.